guys in Dicio.com. Uh, he raised 130,000 bucks early on in the company back in 2018, 2017, selling 10% of the business. That investor then wanted to become CEO, took him in the wrong direction. And then he had fronted to do the hard work of raising $400,000 of more capital at a 2 million valuation, spending 50% of that next round to effectively buy out the first investor. Then he started cranking. He got a partnership lined up. They're now doing about $200,000 a year in revenue or 17 grand a month up from 6,000 a month a year ago. And they just closed a series. Well, last year they closed a series they have 400,000 bucks at a 7.5 million valuation on the back of the excitement from his new partnership. Hey folks, my guest today is Franz Anderson. Six years ago, he worked at an OEM evaluating their forecast accuracy, and he realized that a simple statistical model could outperform not only the internal forecast, but also forecasts from international experts by at least 50%. Later on, he tried to find software that applied these models suited for non-statisticians. He found nothing. That's when he teamed up with his friends to build the best forecasting platform for non-statisticians. Today, his technology is applied within automotive, construction, and finance companies, and it's called Indicio.com. Franz, you ready to take us to the top? Yeah. All Pleasure right. to be here. You bet. So why automotive, construction, and finance to start? And describe how they use you. Yeah. Uh, so... It all started in an automotive company, uh, so that, that's why, and it creates a lot of value for them, because with more accurate market and sales forecasts, they can use this information to, to control the whole company, uh, to adapt their global production uh, prior to, for example, a recession. So. Mm -hmm. Forecasting what makes accuracies. this better? I mean, I think when people think about sales and forecasting, they you know think CRM, they think Salesforce. You know I mean, help us understand how you're different. So um, there's a lot of forecasting going on in in the big enterprises today. Uh, the majority of the forecasting is done in a planning software or in a CRM. And the problem with those forecasts is that they do not consider what is happening in the market or the economy. And this was really visual during the pandemic, for example, where a lot of the order volumes were dropping uh, really quick, while the forecasts were still pointing upwards. So that that's kind of the problem with the current forecasting. That and help me understand consider. how you price the technology. Right? Is this a flat fee? And if so, what are the, what's the average company paying you per month to use the tech? So it's, yeah, we're a SaaS company, so it's a subscription-based. Uh, we're charging for, for the indus industrial companies 4,000 euros per site, and uh, or for the first site, and for additional sites, it's a 3,000 euros per month. Um, and for the financial sector, it's based, uh, the pricing is based upon number of users. Uh, so it's roughly two two hundred thousand US dollars per user per year. Two hundred thousand uh per uh, per two, user per year. Uh, two uh, sorry, twenty thousand. Uh, I'm 20, trying to convert 20, uh, Okay, twenty twenty thousand dollars per seat per year for the financial sector. Uh, and and and, it's, and our finance and automotive, those are your two biggest ones or industrial and finance? Yeah. That's that's the two biggest ones. Okay, interesting. And I guess what's the breakdown? So if you look at total revenue last year, what percent was finance versus industrial? So finance, they were selling through a partnership. So we signed a partnership agreement for roughly a year ago. Uh, we spent the, the spring to, to teach their whole sales organization as well as their support and uh, customer success. And during the summer, they started to hold webinars upon our technology. And during August, they were converting the first paying client. So this is the segment that is, I mean, increasing exponentially uh, because this partner has a, a large uh, global uh, sales organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think that we're going to be 50-50 split between finance and industrial in a couple of months from now. 
Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation this year. Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're gonna see three or four different valuations inside of your FounderPath dashboard, this is all free by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're gonna get a different valuation. A VC is gonna pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're gonna do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. All right, so the teal is what a VC would pay, yellow is what private equity, and red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube, all these data are built from real-time valuation data points founders share with us on the show. So traction, 1.2 million, seed round, 3.7 raise, they sold 22% of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only wanna see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're gonna go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you wanna check this tool out, if you wanna jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations. Or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here, and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. And why go through a partnership model? I mean, and what's the sort of kickback? You've got to incentivize their sales reps to actually sell your tool. Do you split it 50-50 or what's the rough range of how you split the revenue? Yeah, uh, so we split it 50-50, which is giving a lot uh, away, uh, but they're also taking the whole distribution. So they're taking the sales, uh, the customer success, the onboarding, and the support. So they Who have bills to... the customer though. Are you do you own the customer relationship once they sell the customer? No, uh, they they own the customer. Uh, interesting. And so, I mean, how do you? This is like you know, uh, you you want to ride the whale until the whale sort of like bites back, right? How do you make sure that they keep using you long term versus someone else comes and says, "Hey, we'll give you sixty percent." You know, cancel cancel your partnership with Indicio. Um, the, that's a good one. Uh, our technology is so cutting edge, uh, so the technology actually helps them to sell their own uh, product and services to to reach a completely new target audience. So um, I I think it's kind of the the opposite. Uh, we are sitting with kind of the the power uh, we have gave them an exclusive exclusivity yep. for for one year and which is renewed on a yearly basis. So we can. And Franz, if you look at the total customer base today, let's just look at the industrials, the, the customers that you own directly. How many customers are paying you on the industrial side today? Uh, there's a handful, I would say. So it's still early stage. Like a dozen? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, something like 12. And then on the partnership side, is it also like a dozen or about how many have signed up on the finance side? Uh, it's it's half of that. So I think roughly six clients, uh, okay. but it's growing. They're adding... Uh, I don't know, so you have months. 18 total customers, six are finance, 12 are industrials. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. Interesting. So I guess now that we understand sort of how many customers you have and what the product does, put this all in a timeline for us. When did you write the first line of code for the platform? Um, that was back in 2017. 2017. Okay. And um, I guess walk, walk me through how you got your first customer. Do you remember? 
Yeah. So that was a, a bank. And he, uh, I don't know if you read uh, Crossing the Chasm, the book. Of course, Jeffrey Moore, the, yep. Yeah, talking about the, the visionary people uh, that you should attract in the beginning. And he was a truly visionary. He he shared our vision and he he gave us so much good feedback upon how to to create a lot of value for the end user. And is um, he still paying today? Uh, no. <laughs> he, well, come on, he friends. Was, what happened? What happened? He was getting a new manager uh, with budget restriction, um, and we didn't have the partnership with a financial uh, data vendor back then. And that was he really needed that to to get the data integrated into the platform in a smooth way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so, so and the guess- dialogue is actually up and running now again uh, to to get him. As a user and again. Th- so your first user was financial. Going back to industrials for a second, you mentioned 12 industrial customers. How many sites do those 12 industrial customers have on your platform today? So uh, it takes roughly one to two years uh, to get to get it from one site to, to the next. Um, so most of them have uh, one site with you? Yeah, that's correct. And we have a couple... That's just uh, expanding. Okay. So if you charge, you told us earlier, 4,000 per site times 12 customers. I mean, can we can we do that math? You're doing about $50,000 a month in revenue from that part of the business? Mm, not. We, we've iterated the pricing uh, over time. So the pricing that I, I told you is the latest pricing. So we have clients with the older contracts. So the total revenue is... Roughly, I would say two hundred, two hundred thousand uh, dollars per year right now. Yeah. Okay, so two hundred thousand per year. That means you're doing about seventeen thousand dollars per month right now. And what were you doing exactly one year ago? Half, or not even half of that. I would okay. Say. So it's maybe like six thousand dollars a month a year ago. Now you're at seventeen thousand dollars a month, something like that. Mm. Okay. And I guess tell me more about the team. You've been working on this since 2017. So you're now almost six years in. How many folks are full-time today? So we are eight people today. Uh, We are developer heavy. Uh, This technology is, yeah, it's been taking forever to build. How many engineers, Franz? It's six, six engineers. And do you also write code? Uh, no, not any longer. Uh, not I did anymore. in the beginning. Okay. Yeah. okay. Are you the only founder? No, uh, we are three, three founders. Three founders. Okay. Were you guys nice to each other at the beginning? You split equity evenly, thirty-three percent each. Uh, we, the first two, we split it fifty-fifty, okay. and the third one was coming in on a ten percent. Uh, okay. How many years late did the third one join? I think it was a year later or so. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's sort of like 40, 40, you know, 20, something like that. You know, 45, 45, 10, something like that right now. Mm. So you've bootstrapped today. You haven't sold anything to investors? Uh, we have uh, taken in some capital a uh, couple of times. Um, the first well, round when- was really rough. <laughs> when was that? What year? Uh, the first round, could it? been 2018 or seven and ha- how much did you raise then um 130,000 US dollars and why was it rough uh we we were choosing between getting investments from a couple of uh, business angels or one and we thought that oh it's going to be so much easier with a contact and just just having one, uh, but he he had his own plan uh, upon becoming the CEO of the company and trying to push us into to take more of his money and. Uh, oh, so you, we, he he a part of him putting in the money. You guys had to make him CEO. Yeah, that that's what he wanted. Uh, in the in the end, we we bought him out. And mm-hmm. well, how much equity did he buy when he put in one hundred thirty grand? Uh, 
ten percent, I think. Okay, so you raised it like a one one point two, one point three million valuation. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It's not easy to rip somebody out, right? To the extent you can share. I mean, how did you get rid of, you know, effectively a founder that put money in that wasn't working anymore? So we uh we bought him out and he he was getting a good return uh i think it was 50 percent return or something like that you bought him out for like two hundred thousand dollars something like that yeah i think it was something like that okay and where did you get that money from from other investors <laughs> so it's... so what was what was the next round of money you raised then after him uh roughly around or a little bit more than two million in valuation. Uh, what year? Oh, I I need to look at the cap table. It was one year later. The so twenty nineteen. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you raised, and how much did you raise? Uh, it was a ten percent dilution. So the two hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay. And and a bunch of that money went to buying up the first investor basically. Um no that was on top. Uh so okay. 200,000 plus the 200,000 for the first investor. Well, I thought you said the first investor put in about 130,000. Yeah, yeah, but we needed to buy him out uh, to get him a good yes, return. My, que- my question is the second 200 the 200,000 you raised in 2019. The majority of that money go towards buying out the first investor. No, that was adi- an additional uh, two hundred thousand. So you raised four hundred thousand at a two million valuation. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, got it. And then, have you raised any since then? Yeah, uh, we have. I don't have all the details of all the rounds that we have been doing. The latest one was with a valuation of. Uh, seven point five million US dollars. Was this last year? Uh, yeah. And how uh, much did you raise? It was even this year. Um, what do you mean this year? It's, it's, uh, only been, it's only been four days yeah, in a year. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, two thousand and twenty-two. Yeah. And so how much year, did you raise? Yeah. Um, we raised. It was just a small round for the current investors. I think it was four hundred thousand. And how did you convince them to give you a seven point five million valuation when you were doing about six thousand dollars a month in revenue at the time? Due to the partnership uh, ah, potential. I see. So you use so, the partnership, right, and future projections to go get a higher valuation to raise the extra money. Yeah. That's great. Now, okay. is there anything looking back in terms of how you raised money, is there anything you would change? Yeah, there's a lot. Um, so uh, uh, during the Christmas holiday, I was watching the the playlist on Netflix. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, it's about how Spotify was founded. And they did it super quick. I mean, compared to us, <laughs> that's been taking like five years. And um, I think to raise a bigger round in the beginning, building the dream team, of everyone that you need to both build a product, but selling it and getting partnerships, that's where you need uh, Mm -hmm. the real experience. Um, So that's something that I would change. uh, Well, Franz, you've got the new partnership cranking. We're excited to see what happens next. We're out of time today, though. Let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book? Uh, Crossing the Chasm. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Oh, that was a good one. No, not really. Okay. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building Indicio? Probably GitHub. GitHub, yep. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Um... <laughs> I just have small kids for the moment, so it's not much sleep. Uh, normally, I would say seven hours, but now it could okay. be down to three. So married, how many kids? Two kids. Two kids, and how old are you? 
I'm um, uh, 36. 36. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Um, to test, to test out, to start a company, test out your, your ideas. Just, just do it as quick as possible. Don't wait for the right idea to come. Just do it. <laughs> Guys, in Dicio.com, uh, he raised 130000 bucks early on in the company back in 2018, 2017, selling 10% of the business. That investor then wanted to become CEO, took him in the wrong direction. And then he had fronted to do the hard work of raising $400,000 of more capital at a $2 million valuation, spending 50% of that next round to effectively buy out the first investor. Then he started cranking. He got a partnership lined up. They're now doing about $200,000 a year in revenue or seventeen grand a month, up from $6,000 a month a year ago. And they just closed a series. Well, last year, they closed a series. Isaiah, 400,000 bucks at a 7.5 million valuation on the back of the excitement from his new partnership. We will see what happens next. Franz, thanks for taking us to the top. Likewise. Thank you so much. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.